Our final speaker is Professor Kwang Lee from Pennsylvania State University. He will talk about the potential use of neural network in control. More specifically, he will discuss the application of recurrent neural network for generator excitation control in order to enhance the system stability. portion of the lecture is going to be a control of power systems aspect for application of neural networks in electric power systems. And uh, I'll be going over uh, this uh, uh, sequence. Uh, first, we'll talk about the introduction, and then uh, some of the background of uh, neural networks applications to uh, control aspect. And then uh, we'll talk about uh, neural network architectures for modeling and the control. And then we will go on to uh, supervised neural network structures. Uh, and then uh, in particular, we will uh, uh, focus uh, on uh, diagonal neural, uh, recurrent neural network based control system as an example. And then we'll talk about some of the convergence and the stability properties. And then uh, finally, we will talk about application to uh, uh, nuclear reactor control problems. And then uh, we will conclude with some uh, remarks. Uh, first, uh, uh, in terms of uh, history behind the control applications, uh, in 1987, uh, we have uh, Withrow and the Smith paper on Adaline, uh, which is adaptive linear element. Uh, control of an inverted pendulum. And then uh, uh, for several years in 1970s, uh, Elbus uh, developed a new architecture called uh, Celebella Model Ar Articulation Controller, which is a CMAC, uh, in order to control uh, uh, robotic manipulators. And then later uh, he uh, modified Adalin uh, uh, to make uh, uh, Madalin. Uh, by including perceptrons uh, architecture combined with Adalin uh, for binary coding of the input space. Uh, here is some example of uh, uh, applications uh, in controls and identification area. Uh, first, uh, Chow and Thomas uh, uh, applied it to machine modeling problems. And then uh, Santos and Tan uh, worked on capacitor control in uh, a distribution system. And then uh, Vira Surya and uh, El Shakawi uh, in 1991 uh, worked on identification and control of DC motor using neural networks. And then later uh, Wu and others uh, worked on uh, neural network regulator for a turbo generator problem. Uh, also, uh, Cho and others worked on neural 4D controller by combining uh, neural network and 4D logics uh, for uh, induction machine. Uh, and then uh, Xu and Chen uh, and uh, Seto and Zhang and uh, numerous other people uh, worked on uh, power system stabilizers at uh, good, good control applications. Uh, in particular, uh, Hiyama uh, later uh, applied uh, the uh, neural network controller to control a uh, photovoltaic system. Uh, and then uh, uh, also uh, uh, Buffet and Withdraw uh, worked on a lot of frequency control problems. Uh, also, you can see that uh, Neely and others worked on joint uh, bar controller. And then uh, later, uh, it was also applied to a coordinated control problem of excited generator. Finally, uh, Park, Choi, and Lee uh, worked on uh, decentralized control of uh, power st uh, system stabilizers. And then also Ku, Lee, and Edward worked on uh, online control of a nuclear reactor, which we will see as an example later. Okay, now I'd like to talk about architectures for modeling and the control. First, uh, uh, we begin with the representation of a plant uh, in terms of uh, models. There are three types of models. Uh, continuous time representation, also discrete time representation, and uh, normal representation, which means uh, nonlinear 
autoregressive moving average representations. And uh, regardless of the uh, representations, uh, neural network is going to model these behaviors according to these uh, representations. And then based upon the model, we will develop controls. Uh, now, uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, learning model architectures, how neural network is utilized to model uh, plant dynamics uh, for control purpose. Uh, there are four types of uh, architectures. Uh, first, uh, we have uh, A, uh, which is uh, for the plant modeling uh, architectures. And then uh, secondly, we have uh, uh, B, uh, inverse plant modeling architectures. Uh, for, modeling, uh, for the modeling architecture models unknown plant uh, in terms of system identifications by using input and output measurement. Uh, on the other hand, inverse plant modeling is trying to map the inverse of the dynamics or unknown, unknown plant by using the plant input and output and then come up with the out, uh, plant input, which is compared with, uh, with the applied input of, uh, uh, in, in the system. Uh, also, there are uh, uh, two other types of architectures, uh, which is uh, C, uh, uh, specialized inverse plant modeling. And this one makes use of uh, two models. One is the uh, forward plant model in part A, and then uh, inverse plant model in part B. By combining the two, uh, we can model the unknown plant better. Uh, finally, we have what we call operator uh, modeling. In other words, uh, in other words uh, uh, here is an expert controlling unknown plant manually. And then this operator model mimics this expert uh, activities. Uh, and then uh, later, this export can be replaced by this operator model to control the same thing. Now let's take a look at the first one, uh, which is uh, uh, learning modeling architectures. Uh, this one, uh, uh, we are uh, modeling unknown plant uh, in terms of a forward modeling approach. Uh, so here is uh, applied input to the, uh, to the uh, model. And then here is output of the, of the, of the plant by comparing the plant output and the uh, output of the unknown plant, the error is utilized to learn and then tuning the, uh, the plant model. So here we are minimizing the error between uh, plant uh, output and then uh, plant reference output, uh, and then that error is minimized. So this is used, uh, used for a, a prediction uh, purpose of the plant performance, and then also for making uh, fault diagnosis problems. The second architecture is uh, uh, inverse modeling. Here is uh, uh, input to the plant applied, and then output of the plant is also applied. And then it produces uh, uh, output signal, which is compared with the actual output signal, uh, input signal applied and then error is used to learn the inverse model. Uh, this one, uh, the overall uh, controlled uh, plant architecture has a unity transfer function. In other words, uh, by having inverse model in the forward loop for control purpose, uh, the total gain is equal to one. Uh, this one, uh, you have a modeling error uh, perturbs the transfer function away from unity. Uh, and then another property is uh, uh, if we combine it uh, with a feedback control, uh, it can give uh, us a good performance. And so the type of modeling architecture is, uh, uh, is specialized uh, inverse plant modeling. Uh, here we have a forward model and then inverse model combined and uh, uh, unity feedback uh, transfer function, uh, unity transfer function is achievable by using uh, the inverse plant model. And the forward plant model is first constructed. Uh, and, then, uh, and then the error is back propagated to the, 
to the inverse model, as you can see, to tune the second uh, the, 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 the model. And this is a gold ribbon plant error. Uh, the gold ribbon print error is, uh, causes the inverse model to move away, uh, move into previously uh, unexplored regions of input space. And uh, however, this is not as robust as other types because there is no feedback uh, uh, mechanism. The final type is uh, operator modeling. Uh, here is an uh, expert operator, uh, such as uh, you or a human being, controlling a known plant. And then this operator model uh, is learning what expert is doing uh, by comparing input and uh, output of the export uh, controller, and then the error is utilized to tune the operator model. Uh, this one uh, is not uh, very accurate because uh, there are a number of different actions that operator can do uh, to do the same function. Uh, in other words, there is no unique mapping between export and the operator model. And also, there are a lot of noises. Uh, being human, you have a lot of different activities uh, 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 which will still perform the same function. Okay, now we are moving into a supervised control architecture. Uh, and uh, this uh, architecture, uh, uh, we have a fixed stabilizing controllers. Uh, uh, we'll control the plant. Uh, and then also we have a predictable learning control scheme uh, that, that is available. And then we have a model reference adaptive control is available. Finally, uh, internal model control will be explained. Uh, first, uh, we have a fixed stabilizing controllers. Uh, here, uh, we have a stabilizing feedback controller controlling the plant as usual by using feedback signal. And then the performance of this, uh, this controller uh, is, uh, is monitored by learning inverse model. And then uh, the, the performance is improved. Okay? And this is a direct learning control scheme. And then also the closed loop system is stable in every operating region. Finally, a learning controller builds up a nonlinear model of the desired control surface. Okay, another type of a supervised control architecture is predictable learning control scheme. Uh, the power plant, uh, for example, uh, such as the boiler, uh, you have a lot of lead time. So there is uh, enough room to make some predictions uh, before you actually apply control. So here we formulate the control strategy by assessing the effect of its action into the future and select the optimal control action. In other words, uh, this is the uh, user controller. Uh, and then this is assessment uh, or optimization uh, function. In other words, uh, by using plant model in a predictive mode, uh, and then by comparing the, uh, the, the, the output of the plant response, and then you make some kind of assessment whether that action is, uh, is, uh, is appropriate. Once you decide it is, uh, it is OK, then uh, that, uh, that, uh, that controller uh, or decision is, uh, is uh, made available uh, to control the actual plant. So this is uh, a learning control, and it has excellent closed-loop control for good plant model with a proper performance function and the search strategy. Another type is, uh, which is a popular one is a model reference adaptive control scheme. Uh, here we have a reference model, and the reference model is uh, producing a, a idealistic response uh, based upon a, a, a set point or input signal, which is applied to the controller. And then uh, the response of the response model and the actual plant response is compared, and then the error is used to, learn, to tune the controller. And here, uh, uh, performance depends upon the choice of a suitable reference model and the learning mechanism. You have to have a reasonable model 
which will not stress the controller too much. Uh, and then also, uh, how do you make the learning uh, mechanism efficient so that you can use it for online control purpose? And, and that is very important for this type of controller. Another type of uh, supervised control architectures is internal model control. Uh, we uh, uh, model the process directly. In other words, here is plant model, models uh, plant directly. Uh, and then the error is compared. And then that is used as a feedback signal to make a further adjustment uh, to control. Uh, error between the model and the plant output is used uh, uh, as a feedback signal just like the feedback control uh, loop. And the internal model control is designed to be an inverse plant model. Okay. In other words, uh, this is designed offline by using an uh, inverse modeling scheme that I have described. And stability results are variable with assumptions on the open of stability, exact modeling, and or inverse modeling. Uh, there is another type of, uh, of, of a control, is reinforcement learning systems. Okay. This one is, uh, is making use of two blocks. One is adaptive critic element, another one is associative critic uh, search, search learning. Uh, associative search learning produces the optimal control signal. So any, uh, any types of uh, uh, controller can, uh, can be in this block. However, we have additional block which is called uh, adaptive critic element, which monitors the performance of the of the controller. In other words, uh, 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 here we have a signal applied, and then here we have output response monitored, and then performance of the of the controller is evaluated, uh, and then uh, if it is not satisfactory then additional uh, reinforcement signal is applied to the controller. Another controller uh, is, uh, uh, is intelligent gain scheduling approach. Uh, this is a conventional PID controller, which is normally fixed uh, for a particular operating point to control the plant. However, the gain of a controller can be adjusted by using external loop, which is called associative memory mapping. In other words, uh, suppose uh, we want to have uh, some performance to be achieved in terms of uh, rise time or overshoot of the plant response. Uh, and then we are making comparison between the actual response of the plant and the desired one. And then the error is used to tune the gain of the controller. Now, uh, going into more specifics in terms of uh, supervised neural network structures, uh, there are uh, basically uh, three types of uh, uh, neural network structures. Uh, first, most popular one is uh, multi-layer uh, feed-forward uh, networks. Here, uh, input signal is pro uh, propagated forward through uh, several processing layers. And uh, feed forward uh, uh, network is a static mapping, however. Uh, in other words, uh, you have to have uh, tapped delays uh, in order to represent the dynamic mapping. And often, we need to have a dynamic uh, compensators or controllers for control purpose. For that purpose, uh, we have to have uh, number of uh, tapped delays, which makes the uh, network larger and complicated. Uh, <clears throat> another type of a network uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, radial basis function network. Uh, this mimics the uh, biological paradigm in favor of topology and the simpler and the more amenable for training. Uh, this one has a single layer of a hidden node with the radially uh, symmetric uh, basis activation function. And uh, above all, uh, the important property of uh, RBN is uh, locally responsive. In other words, 
uh, we don't have to change all uh, neurons when you train. Uh, only the uh, smaller uh, subset of the uh, network can be trained depending upon the input uh, 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 signal. And then uh, another important class of uh, neural network is recurrent neural networks. This RNA is similar to a, a feed-forward neural network. However, in addition to that, it has uh, some feedbacks. Uh, therefore, uh, it can be used to model nonlinear dynamic networks and uh, has attractive dynamics and uh, store information for later use. Uh, having been uh, having uh, with uh, uh, since it has uh, feedbacks, uh, it can also deal with the time varying input output signals, and it is certainly a dynamic mapping. Uh, you you don't really need uh, external feedback like uh, like the feed for the neural network case, so there are no or few external feedbacks. However, uh, uh, since you have a feedbacks uh, in many of the uh, neurons, uh, uh, training might be difficult. So as a compromise, uh, now we have an alternative architecture, which is called diagonal recurrent neural networks. Uh, this one, uh, you have a feedbacks, but uh, only uh, uh, in this neuron, in the hidden layer, and you have an uh, output applied to input in terms of a feedback. So you only use a self-recurrency rather than uh, uh, cross talks. You don't connect one neuron to another neuron uh, through a feedback uh, passage. So this way, this is a, a minimal variation, and uh, you have a fewer weight to train. So real-time application uh, is possible. Now. Uh, Using this uh, diagonal recurrent neural network, uh, we can design a, a control or a system. And there are two types of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, neural networks being utilized. Okay. One is a neural identifier uh, to model the plant and also provide uh, the sensitivity uh, to the uh, neural controller. And the neural controller uh, follows the plant model. Uh, in order to make it applicable for uh, uh, online control, uh, dynamic backpropagation can be uh, utilized, and then also uh, uh, the, the convergence and the stability should be guaranteed. So this diagram shows the uh, architecture. Uh, this is the plant that, that you want to control, and uh, this is the reference model which you want to follow. And uh, the difference between uh, actual response of the plant and the reference model is, uh, is, uh, uh, is used uh, to train the neural, net, uh, neural controller uh, using dynamic backpropagation algorithm. Similarly, a uh, uh, neural identifier is used to model the plant. And here, the input of the uh, plant, then output of the plant is compared with the output of the uh, identifier, and then error is used to train the neural identifier. In addition to that, the sensitivity function is uh, available within uh, identifier, and that is passed to neural controller for training purpose. Now uh, let's take a look at uh, application of this uh, diagonal neural network based controller. And we are applying this to a nuclear reactor control problem. Uh, nuclear reactor uh, uh, is described by these following equations. And the, the first equation is uh, uh, equation corresponding to uh, neutrons. And then uh, second equation is uh, for uh, precursor density. And then it can be represented in terms of the normalized equations, as you can see. In addition to uh, neutron and the precursor density, we have a temperature dynamics. Uh, temperature uh, in terms of uh, fuel temperature, uh, T sub F, and then also uh, temperature leaving the reactor. 
uh, T sub L. Finally, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, control rod dynamics uh, uh, in terms of uh, rod speed applied, then uh, the rod is going to move. And uh, the the density of the of the of the uh, of the reactor uh, is uh, uh, is D sub rho, and that is applied to the uh, reactor model nonlinearly. So the the whole equation is nonlinear plant. And also, depending upon operating point, uh, it exhibits quite different properties. So altogether, we have uh, we have uh, uh, second order for reactor, and then uh, second order for uh, thermohydraulics, and then additional order for control rod. So you have a fifth order model to uh, to play with. Uh, we have divided the operation region into uh, nine regions uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, power output, 10%, uh, 50%, uh, and then 100% power output. And also the control rod was is changed, uh, signifying that the aging of the, of the fuel. Uh, so this is kind of a nominal uh, control rod, and this is the, the the smallest, this is the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the highest uh, control rod. So here, uh, region one is the 50% power level and then nominal control rod. And then we have a label there's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And region six represents the, uh, the nominal power uh, region uh, with 100% uh, power output. Uh, we have a uh, Four cases of simulations uh, 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 experimented here in this in this presentation. Uh, first, we will make uh, local control, uh, changing the power from 100% to 90%, and then back to 100%. And then, secondly, uh, we will uh, apply this controller for global operation. The controller trained uh, in the nominal operating point is used without further training. Uh, for other operating region of 50% power level changes. And then uh, thirdly, uh, it will be also used for emergency operation. Uh, the power is from 100% to 25%, uh, which means we have a huge step down from region 5 to region 3. Finally, we will also uh, simulate uh, the shutdown and the startup uh, operation by changing the power from 100% to 10%, and then back up to 100% uh, using a ramp function uh, from region 5 to region 3. First, uh, this is uh, uh, the local operation in the nominal uh, region. Uh, power is changed from 100% to 90% and then back up to 100%. Uh, and that power is shown in graph A. And the graph A, power was 100%. And then, uh, and then change it to 90%, and then back up to 100%. Uh, so you have some overshoot of the power, which is acceptable. However, more important uh, uh, parameter or variable is B, which is temperature, because temperature is giving a thermal stress to the, to the mechanical component. So we want to have a thermal, uh, the temperature changing very smoothly and yet uh, very rapidly. So this is the, uh, uh, the temperature uh, or exit temperature response. And then finally, uh, C is control rod speed. Uh, control rod is moving with uh, quite a bit of overshoot in order to uh, uh, produce the, the response that we are, uh, we are, we are having. So this one, uh, as you can see, we have a solid line and then dotted line. Solid line is uh, the reference model, which we want to follow from uh, uh, reference model. And then dotted line is the response uh, using neurocontroller. As you can see, uh, there is no distinction. So you have a perfect match of the, of the, of the, of the, of the reference model by using neurocontroller. Second case is uh, now uh, the same controller is used uh, to control the reactor at different operating point of a 50% power level. 
So here we have changed from 40% to 50% and then uh, again 40%. So uh, the power is changed in graph A uh, from 40% uh, from to 50% and then again 40%. And here the overshoot is, uh, is acceptable. And in fact, that's what the reference model is producing. And the neural network is following exactly like that. Uh, and then uh, the graph V is the temperature. The okay, temperature is changing uh, following this graph from 50%, uh, 40% to 50% and then 40% very smoothly without overshoot. And then uh, C is control rod uh, response. Here again, the dotted line indicates the plant response and the solid line is for reference model and uh, you have a cross match of the neural controller. So the experiment uh, is uh, uh, emergency operation. Now we are changing uh, uh, power which is in uh, which is in graph A from 100% uh, down to 25%. in a very short time period. And the temperature is also changing very smoothly following that without any overshoot. So this response is very much a desirable response uh, in spite of the fact that neural controllers are trained in the nominal region and yet on online uh, control is readjusted for this kind of uh, uh, extreme operation. Uh, Finally, uh, in case D, this is uh, mimicking uh, startup and the shutdown operation. The power is changed from 100% uh, down to 10% and then backed up again to 100%. So uh, we see the, that power is changing linearly exactly the way we want. And also the temperature is changing linearly exactly the way, the way we want. So neural control is, uh, is capable of, uh, of controlling uh, on a wide range of the operating point without giving us any odd behavior. Con Graph C is uh, the control rod response giving the, uh, the power changes that we had and the control rod is, uh, is pretty much activated whenever you are making changes and these are acceptable uh, responses. So now uh, in conclusion, uh, we talked about, uh, uh, first of all, how neural networks are used uh, uh, for controlling dynamic systems in general. And then we looked at uh, numerous applications uh, of control problems and identification problem in power systems. And then we looked at uh, neural network architectures uh, for modeling and the control. Uh, neural network paradigms uh, also discussed uh, in terms of a feed for the neural network and then a, a radial basis function network and then uh, also a, a fully recurrent network. And then finally we looked at uh, diagonal uh, recurrent neural network, uh, DLNN, as uh, a minimal variation of the, of the, of the uh, architectures. And then we looked at uh, how uh, this DLN is, uh, DLNN is used uh, for, uh, for control purpose, and we applied that to nuclear reactor control. And we have seen that uh, uh, neural networks uh, can be used uh, effectively as a local controller, and yet uh, it adapts uh, its own uh, gains in such a way that it can be applied uh, over a wide range of operations. Thank you. Dr. Lee's talk concludes our tutorial on artificial neural networks with applications to power systems.